Hi, this is Mark at Titus Performance. Uh, today we're going to do a video on some block prep for a Titus engine that we're building. It's a 434 small block. Uh, the last video I did was balancing the crankshaft of this particular engine. Uh, so we're going to talk today about the block prep, some of the things that are new about Titus blocks, some of the things that uh, we still do that we have done from the beginning. Um, I think I have all my essentials here today. I have uh, Colby. Colby is the manager of our received shipping material breakdown department. I've got me some good strong Titus coffee to start out the day. So let's go ahead and get on with uh, looking at the block. Well, first off to new things that we've done this year is we have changed the type plugs that we use in the block. I think you've seen some pictures of that probably on our, on our page. Uh, they actually seal with a metal to metal seal, but they also seal with the O-ring that goes in this particular machined area. And it is a double seal so that the uh, material is not being tightened down just on the O-ring, it actually seals on the metal itself. Uh, next thing that we have done is we have added some more material even to our main caps than what we even had before. We've made the main caps even a, a little bit wider. We've also made them a little thicker, um, all in an effort to try to make uh, a stronger block. Uh, we have some guys pushing these things well over 2,500 horsepower, and we kind of want to stay ahead of the curve um, because if you fall behind the curve, it's a horrible place to be. Um, one of the things that we have done to kind of offset the weight of the increase of material in the main caps is we've made our rear main cap a two-piece uh, main cap. And the back half of the main cap is now made out of aluminum. It attaches to the front half of the main cap with four bolts. It has dowel pins that go inside to keep it aligned uh, so that if you take it off and put it back on, it'll go back on in the same spot. Um, the other thing that we have done this year is we have raised the cam in the engine. So the cam to crankshaft center line is no more standard Cleveland. It is a little bit taller and that is done for a couple reasons. Uh, one of the main reasons is uh, it allows us to put bigger strokes even in our engines than we have before. I mean we have run a four and a half inch stroke in our block before with an aluminum rod and uh, I know of another builder who has run a steel rod with a 4.6 stroke in it. So we can now have even increased that to where we can pretty much go with as much stroke as you would desire to put in this particular block. Uh, the other reason that we have changed that is, is we're able to use a timing set that uh, we do now that is made in America. And the timing set's a little bit lighter. Um, we have two different style timing sets. One is the adjustable style uh, that has a vernier, and one, uh, one is not that has the nine keyways in the bottom, but both do feature a roller bearing in the back. Um, with that, you'll notice the holes for the uh, camshaft thrust plate are no longer in the Cleveland area. And the reason that we have done that is because now we are making uh, provision to be put bigger cams in the engine that when you can possibly squeeze in between the bolts of a standard Cleveland thrust plate. So now we are making and supplying our own thrust plates. Um, when it comes to the thrust plate, pretty much it's a uh, pretty easy deal. It's, uh, it goes on when you assemble your camshaft get out of the way here and when you assemble your camshaft one neat feature of that is is uh, you can see the thrust plate now you can see the thrust plate has the align has the bolt holes that actually align with the timing gear so if you want to remove your thrust plate or camshaft you can actually now remove it as an assembly from the engine rather than having to use pullers and pull these off when they're tight or the chain has got uh, some tension on them, you can actually pull everything apart now, just like our belt drives, uh, all in one unit with the cam, thrust plate, timing gear, all in one, in one section. We try to, as builders of engines as well, we try to just think of all the neat little things that would help make a guy's job a little easier. Um, 
One of the things that we've done this particular block, a couple small changes that is specific for this block. You notice we've tapped the timing or the uh, the oil feed hole. That's because this is going to be a dry sump engine, so we're blocking off the oil feed. Um, the oil feed will get fed into the uh, standard provision for the oil filter. One other little thing we did different for this particular block, let me get my finger out of the way, is we didn't put the big hole here that normally goes for your water return to your heater hose. We just put a small hole there, and that's tapped with an eighth inch pipe plug. Um, we did not put the holes in the front where the um, your water bypass goes uh, through and also where your normal 351 Cleveland sending unit would go because the sending unit is going to be in the water supply piping on this particular block and the motor plate that's going to go on the front covers those up anyhow so we're eliminating any kind of a potential leak that could be behind the motor plate um, we did put this hole back in it because it actually provides a nice little place to burp the system of air when you're filling the, the block. So it's a nice little hole that you can just take the plug out, make sure that the water is full in the block, and that way you don't have an overheating problem. Um, as this block is getting a 904 lifter. Um, we've bored and honed this block. We've uh, chamfered the tops of the cylinders. Um, We've already made sure that the distributor fits. The distributor bushing is all sized to the distributor. That's uh, real easy to do. You just drop a distributor in it, make sure it, it fits. Uh, all our oil plugs now are also the O-ring style oil plugs. They're no longer pipe plugs. That way you don't have to worry about stretching out the block. They're, um, they go in, they seal, they tighten up on an O-ring. Um, we've also threaded the dipstick hole for this because being a dry sump engine it's not going to need a dipstick in the oil pan so we uh, this engine will run a vacuum pump on it so no need to have a place to leak vacuum or anything like that we've already mocked this block up and as you can see we've done a little bit of notching here on the in the cylinders both uh, both sides of the cylinders and that is basically just because the aluminum rod is wider than the steel rod as far as its, its width in the beam area. Um, that particular area, the, we're just giving a little bit of extra clearance there um, as this engine is going to turn some pretty high RPM. So we just want to make sure that everything is clearance there. Uh, back to the main caps. One of the things that we have done, uh, this particular block, um, I have not clearanced anything on the main webbing. This is right out of the, uh, the machining center and I didn't have to machine anything. We've been sneaking up on this particular area. Uh, in the past, we had to hand fit uh, some of the areas down inside the block, like the, uh, the, where the crankshaft would swing. But what our purpose of doing all this is and sneaking up on this is to make the block stronger by keeping the main webs uh, in this area as thick as possible. And as you can see, maybe or maybe not, the center counterweight on this one, or the center thrust uh, main web, is actually a little bit wider than the two in the number four. And that is because the crankshaft actually has a little bit more room in this particular area. So again, we leave as much material as we can in there. Now, when it comes to the cap itself, this is uh, another block that's out on the market. We build quite a few of these as well. We don't just build our blocks. But as you can see, our main cap is that much wider. Um, and you can see that the, the block is the same width as what the main caps are. Now, if you take this particular block, ours, and just look at the width of the main webbing, that center main web is actually wider than the main cap. Number two and four are the exact same width as the main cap. And then when you jump up to number one, you jump up to number one and you see how wide that main cap actually, or the main webbing actually is. And that's about as wide as we can make it and still fit a crankshaft in it. And the reason we make this one wider, uh, two reasons. Um, first off is when you run a blower engine, a blower engine takes a lot of thrust out on the on the front of the engine when it's pulling on the pulleys, pulling on the gear drive or anything like that. 
We want as much material in this area to keep this uh, planted, to keep anything from walking around and put as much clamping power down on this to, to hold everything that we can. Uh, the other reason that we make this wider is we've done a lot of looking uh, and studying oil flow in the engine and we have revised our hole sizes in the engine and naturally the block would be stronger if it didn't have any ho holes in it at all in the cam feeds and the oil feeds so what we've done is studied the oil flow in the engine we're trying to get these down to where we don't have to put as big of a hole in them as possible we've also relocated the cam uh, feed hole and also relocated the main feed hole the cam feed hole is actually now off center of the cam feed and that is because bearing manufacturers have found that feeding the whole hole off center at the bottom let me get my finger down here where you can see it feeding the hole off center down at the bottom on the cam bearing actually helps feed oil to the cam bearing at the bottom of the cam bearing where it gets the most load um, the other reason for making the front main cap wider is to accommodate the larger feed hole where the oil is fed uh, from the front of the block across and then goes down to the main uh, feed hole that feeds all the mains to the uh, to the bottom end of the engine we want to keep this as this main web as wide as we can because we have to put a bigger hole in it you have to keep a good volume of oil but you have to keep uh, strength in the block so we're, we're doing our best to uh, get both of those worlds for the really high horsepower engines now for the street guys that really probably doesn't matter but like I say, we do have some guys that are, you know, pushing over 2,500. And I expect we'll probably have some guys push these things well over 3,000 horsepower here very shortly.